Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about projections, and projections are another absolutely fundamental concept in geographic information science uh, that you just absolutely have to know. You have to be completely comfortable with working with scale, and you also have to understand projections. And actually, there's a relationship between projections and scale that we will get into. So these things, uh, you have to understand, uh, they appear as separate, but there's actually an important relationship between them. Uh, so what are projections? Well, let me tell you what the fundamental problem is. Just like with scale, the fundamental problem is that the Earth is very large, and we have to actually work with it on a much smaller scale. Uh, uh, smaller workspace, whether that's an actual tabletop you've got a globe on and maps on, or whether it's some kind of computer monitor that you're displaying digital information on, we have to work with the information, our representations about the Earth, smaller than the actual planet. So that leads us into scale and all of the issues that we have to work with there. So what is the fundamental issue with projections? Well, the fundamental issue is that the Earth is roughly spherical, it's round, uh, in addition to being large, it is round. Uh, but most of the time, every time we work with some representation of a geographic phenomenon, we are working with it on a two-dimensional flat surface. Whether that is a traditional paper map that's flat, whether it is your computer monitor, whether it's the screen of a smartphone or a tablet, or whether it's a projection uh, screen. Uh, projector screen for giving some kind of presentation. Uh, we very, very, very frequently work with geographic information not as a three-dimensional spherical representation, but very frequently work with it on a two-dimensional planar representation. So what we have to do is we have to come up with some way to convert all of the spherical representations of the planet to a two-dimensional representation for, our, for the ease of our use on our different two-dimensional displays or two-dimensional sheets of paper. This actually generates a tremendous number of issues that we have to be aware of, very important issues. So, but first let me point out that this globe doesn't have the issue. We're back to our trusty globe here. And the globe uh, does not have any kind of issue with projection. Now, the globe has an issue with scale. We went through and we calculated that because the globe is a model, a scale model of the planet. It's obviously not uh, the true size of the planet, so we calculated exactly how much smaller uh, this planet, uh, this globe is than the actual planet. But this globe does not have an issue with a projection because the Earth is round, this globe is round. So actually, the globe is an ideal way to uh, view geographic information for some, in some respects because the Earth is round, the globe is round, so we can do very accurate uh, transfer, uh, transfer and representation of information all in the correct location and all uh, correct uh, distance from one another, uh, just as it is on the actual planet. So this is one thing that makes globes very, very useful because they are round just like the Earth. You don't have to worry about any kind of distortion that ends up getting introduced into the representations of your phenomenon just because you are trying to go from a, a three-dimensional surface to a two-dimensional surface. So this is a major advantage that globes have. If you need to view geographic information, hey, pick up a globe. Uh, it's, it's a great model representation of the planet. Now, of course, although theoretically ideal in that respect, the globe does have a number of practical problems. It's very difficult to, say, put in my pocket. Uh, you know, I can fold up a map and I can stick it in my pocket and I can take it with me. Uh, I can't do that so much with uh, a globe. It's always inconvenient to carry all of the globe, uh, globes to class uh, with me across campus. Not so inconvenient with just the maps. It's also much more difficult to uh, create an area that is zoomed in. You know, I can really only view all of this geographic information at this particular scale, and if I want to sort of zoom into an area, I'm going to have to be creating increasingly larger globes. And this one is already inconvenient to walk around with uh, a whole lot. You can imagine that if I wanted a, a really nice map of, uh, say, Japan, but all I had were globes, I would have to make a gigantic globe uh, to represent uh, Japan in the amount of detail that I would like to see it if I'm trying to do some kind of study of Japan, which only uh, compounds the inconvenience of having this, this curved spherical globe uh, to work with. So 
uh, issues of scale, issues of portability, all of that uh, make a globe not so great as far as practical viewing of geographic information. And so we often get around that by creating maps at different scales, smaller maps that are just uh, representations of what we want to represent. Uh, we can do this digitally as well, of course. Everybody's completely used to being able to zoom in and zoom out of something like uh, Google Maps or Google Earth. Uh, and that zooming is changing scales and showing uh, the different detail that you're going to be seeing. And so that's very useful and has uh, a lot of advantages, a lot of practical advantages over the globe. But the disadvantage of all of that is that you introduce distortion into your data because you are having to transform the representation of the data from a three-dimensional surface to a two-dimensional surface. So that leads me to what a projection is. A projection fundamentally is nothing more and nothing less than a systematic conversion of three-dimensional spherical coordinates to a two-dimensional surface, to a two-dimensional plane. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to come up with some systematic way of taking all of these different latitude and longitude coordinates. I've got all these different latitude and longitude coordinates that tell me the positions of things on this planet, and I need to take them, and I need to put them on something flat, such as this sheet of paper. I've got to go from this spherical surface to this uh, flat surface. If I'm going to make a paper map out of it, this could also be your computer monitor or whatever flat surface you're going to be showing it. So that should also sort of lead back to what I was telling you about latitude and longitude and latitude and longitude being a spherical coordinate system. It's a three-dimensional coordinate system because it tells us everything about position on this three-dimensional surface. Uh, but what it does not do is it does not tell us position on something flat. Think about how you give coordinates on a two-dimensional surface. Going back to uh, middle school geometry for sure, when you're working with a Cartesian plane, you're working with that plane that's got the numbers and the grids and you're working on different positions. Well, that seems similar to latitude and longitude. Okay, you got X and you got Y. I go over this amount and up this amount and down this amount and place a little point there. Okay, that's a Cartesian grid. They may look similar, but the fundamental difference is that that latitude and longitude was all about angles. It was an angular coordinate system based on the spherical surface. And a Cartesian grid is just for giving two-dimensional coordinates. So I've got to do something to systematically convert all of these different latitude and longitude locations to two-dimensional Cartesian grid coordinates. When I do that, when I come up with a systematic way to do that, then I have a projection. So projections are actually just mathematical equations. If you look up uh, projections in a uh, projection manual such as published by the Geological Survey or some uh, agency that publishes maps or geographic information data, uh, they will talk about uh, what kind of projections they are using to make maps and so forth. And you can go and look up the exact equations that are used to produce a map. So uh, because it's systematic, actually what a projection, any projection does, is it tells you I've got these particular latitude and longitude coordinates, enter them into this equation, by the time it comes out the other end of the equation, you have two-dimensional x and y coordinates that you can plot on your paper or on your computer monitor. Uh, let me do just point out uh, that I did say it was systematic. Okay, when we do something mathematical like an equation like that, we are using a systematic transference from the three-dimensional surface to the two-dimensional surface. So there are instances where you can have a map that does not have a projection. These are comparatively rare when you're talking about geographic information systems, but occasionally they do pop up, especially when people are doing things uh, like cognitive mapping, which is a particular uh, research technique uh, used in geography for understanding how people uh, understand and conceptualize their space. So if I just gave you a, a sheet of paper and a pen, and I said, hey, uh, draw your home or draw the entire world, draw a map of the entire world, uh, draw a map of your home country, uh, just out of your head. Well, people are going to be able to do that and are going to have different capabilities of doing that and are going to come up with different kinds of representations based on their cognitive understanding of place and so forth. Uh, but if I were to just take this, uh, this pen and start drawing a map of the United States on this uh, sheet of paper, 
uh, I would not be doing a projection. Uh, because I'm not in any kind of systematic way converting all the latitude and longitude coordinates of the United States into two-dimensional surface coordinates systematically in any kind of regular way. I'm just making it up as I go along. I'm probably doing a better job in some places and worse jobs in some places, which is what's going to make the map uh, look not quite right and all the different things that cognitive mapping does. So that is a non-systematic way of trying to represent three-dimensional coordinates on a two-dimensional surface. So if I were to just do that, if I were just to start drawing, I would not create uh, a map with a projection, uh, so to speak. So it does have to be systematic, and the systematic uh, element comes from working through the exact same equation for every pair of latitude and longitude coordinates uh, to produce some output of x and y coordinates, and going th through that process, that same equation for every single latitude and longitude, and coming up with my x and y to plot. We talk about projections and not just projection because it is the case that any type of systematic conversion like that is going to introduce some kind of distortion into the data, and we're going to talk about exactly what kinds of distortion as we go forward. Uh, so there is no just one definitive single best way to go about this. There are many, many different uh, projections that have been developed. So there are many, many different equations that you could possibly use to convert three-dimensional data to two-dimensional uh, coordinates, three-dimensional latitude and longitude to two-dimensional coordinates. Uh, and it's your responsibility as a cartographer, as a GIS analyst, uh, to understand all of the properties of projections and what projection will therefore be best uh, for your particular analysis or the map that you're making. So that's why you have to understand that because you can end up with problems if you use the wrong kind of projection or you perform the wrong kinds of operations to particular data in different data in different projections. Okay, so because we have so many different projections, some of them are better for some things, some of the things are worse for some things, it is the case that this could be a very time-consuming process if you needed to do it manually. And of course, before computers, it was done manually. Uh, if you wanted to create a map in a certain kind of projection, you would have all of your different latitude and longitude, you have the equation that is for the projection you're trying to do, and then for absolutely every single pair of latitude and longitude, you put them through this equation, get out your x and y, and put the point on your Cartesian grid. But one of the major advantages that computer systems have had on cartographic production and GIS analyst uh, analysis like this is the ability to automate uh, projection projections, automate that procedure of converting from 3D coordinates to 2D coordinates. This is because computers are very, very good at doing math. Computers are happy to do math, uh, you know, millions of calculations of a second or more, uh, and people just can't do calculations that fast. So all that we need in order to sort of automate the uh, conversion from three-dimensional coordinates to two-dimensional coordinates or a variety of different two-dimensional coordinates so we can investigate different projections is to do a whole bunch of math. We need to take these coordinates, all of these coordinates could be thousands or millions of them, and pass them through an equation and then put a corresponding point on something two-dimensional. Computers are very happy to do that for us. And so it greatly speeds up the process of producing different projections from uh, geographic three-dimensional data. However, just because the computer can do it for you doesn't mean the computer understands what it should be doing, which equation it should be, should be using in any particular circumstance. Uh, you have to know that. The analyst still has to know that. What is the correct projection to use? Uh, and then assign the computer the task of making it, uh, but you cannot sort of uh, outsource your cognitive understanding of the subject to the computer uh, because it's still the case uh, even today that computer systems will get it wrong. Uh, and so the analyst uh, still has to really know this subject in order to uh, go forward uh, and complete a GIS project successfully or make a map correctly. Uh, this is absolutely essential. So I'm going to show you that this is difficult, this process of going from three-dimensional coordinates to two-dimensional coordinates. And then I'm going to give you two different major ways that we classify projections, because as we said, there is no such thing as a perfect projection for all applications. So we need to understand the different ways uh, that projections work so we can classify them. So there are two major ways that we classify projections. One is by what information is preserved. What information does a particular projection get right? 
about three-dimensional data or preserve when it makes that conversion to two-dimensional coordinates. And the other major way that we uh, classify projections is by developable surface, what we call a developable surface. And so we're going to talk about uh, each one of those in more detail coming up.